previous video, we saw how two and a half ton stones were moved from a barge to their final location. Now in this video, we will see how large 16 ton casing stones were moved from a barge and placed at their final location. Moving large casing stones in a rapid manner without handling scars by hand or with back muscles is impossible. The process described in this video is fast, powerful, and controllable. The process was accomplished using specialized barges and stone moving techniques that are readily apparent with the use of water locks and barges. The following animation shows one type of specialized barge which allowed the fast and easy method to move casing stones off of a barge. The barge is shown in cross section. Water is allowed to enter the barge which allows the barge and stone to move down. Water is removed from the barge which moves the barge and stone up. As in most water lock systems, the barges were narrow. The barges were built to be narrower than the width of the casing stone. This would allow the casing stone to overhang the barge a little bit on each side. The casing stone on barge would be moved between two supports. Water would be allowed to enter the barge which would lower the barge and the stone. The stone would come to rest on the two supports. The barge with water in it could be moved out of the way. Water is allowed to enter the barge which allows the stone to come to rest on the supports. The barge is still able to float and can be moved out of the way. The barge with water in it is still able to float, but it is low in the water. The bottom of the barge is not resting on the bottom of the pond impounded by the casing stones. This barge is moved to the edge of the pond. Workers can quickly siphon water from the barge over the side of the pond which will allow the barge to become fully buoyant again. The workers use a hose filled with water that has a valve on both ends. One end of the hose would go into the barge while the other end was over the side of the pond. Opening both valves allowed water to be siphoned from the barge. A worker operates a valve on the siphon hose which allows water to be siphoned from the barge. The casing stone has quickly been removed from the barge and the barge has been quickly uh, emptied of water. Another specialized barge had two compartments. One compartment was forward and the other one aft. Allowing water to enter either of these compartments would allow the barge to pivot. Also, allowing water to enter both compartments would cause the barge and stone to move vertically. By using this type of specialized barge, casing stones were moved to their final location. The barge with two compartments is shown in cross section. This specialized barge can both pivot and move vertically. The following animation shows an application using a barge with two compartments. The barge supports a casing stone on one end while water in the rear compartment acts like a counterbalance. Using a hand operated valve for each compartment, the amount of water entering each compartment was easily controlled. Water was easily removed by siphoning water over the edge of the pond impounded by the casing stones. The importance of the following animation is not the exact scale, but to illustrate the concept of using a specialized barge in this manner. The barge with two compartments is shown in cross section.
By varying the amounts of water in each compartment, the casing stone can be lifted, lowered, or pivoted. This specialized barge already has water in both compartments. This causes the barge to ride low in the water. The barge is moved to the casing stone which is resting on the supports. Water is siphoned from the barge which causes the barge to rise up in the water. The barge rises up and supports the back edge of the casing stone. The barge, riding low in the water, because it has water in both compartments, is moved to the back of the casing stone. Water is siphoned out of the barge, which causes the barge to rise up and support the back of the casing stone. Now the casing stone is ready to be attached to the barge. Shims are placed on the corners of the casing stones. Ropes are used to attach the casing stone to the barge. The shims keep the ropes from being damaged by the sharp corners of the casing stones. Water is removed from the barge by siphoning the water over the edge of the pond impounded by the casing stones. This causes the barge to lift the casing stone up off the supports it was resting on. Shims and ropes are used to attach the casing stone to the barge. Water is siphoned from the barge. The barge lifts the stone off of the supports. This specialized barge with water in the back compartment acting like a counterbalance, can now move the casing stone over towards the edge of the pond. This 16-ton casing stone is located just above its final resting place, yet there is much more to the process of setting the stone to where it will stay for centuries. The following video in this series will depict the remainder of the process the original builders used to set in place casing stones when they built the Great Pyramid.